think we'd better cover a little bit about the whole ongoing debate. It's very topical, certainly in primary bowel and primary rectal cancer, of whether open surgery, laparoscopic surgery, or robotic surgery is the way forward. And I know that we have a lot of ongoing debates, Bill, haven't we, about... I still personally believe that for some patients, open surgery is the best, but there are advances in robotic in particular, which are coming down the line. Well, would you like to tell us a little bit of that? Yeah, uh, I, I think it's less, less of a, a, a debate in liver surgery, although I'm sure, you know, we have the, the zealots, including one of my old trainees, Nick O'Rourke. Um, so I think for me, the, you know, we do laparoscopic liver surgery, or my colleague Tim John does it beautifully, but they're highly selected cases, usually limited disease, and ideally straight lines. So segment two, three, that, well, whether you, because for, for me, I, it's very rare for me to do, for example, a right hepatectomy anymore, because that you can do that laparoscopically, but actually, uh, I've seen videos of people do it for a solitary met where I would have done a segmentectomy six. Yeah, that's the dangerous. And pres it? preserved yeah. liver, which is a much more difficult operation to do radically. So I, I think that, you know, it's a bit like debating do you use a cuser to transect the parenchyma or an en energy device or finger fracture or whatever or a Kelly Kleisis like the Japanese. The Japanese do it beautifully. I couldn't do it beautifully. But it doesn't matter as long as you do the job. Yeah. So I think that, um, I, I think one of the things that has hampered open liver surgery is people, uh, A, make the wounds too big. We, we've virtually never opened the left side. You know, the Mercedes-Benz incision, we never do. We just open up the right side and, and fit for purpose. So on the left side, it's only about six inches long. Yeah. Um, and, and actually, they go home on day three. So right epitectomy will go home on day three or four with a slightly longer incision, but not much. So the real action is finding the lesions and not causing any damage and then they'll recover quickly and home and then and I think one of the things that we are particularly uh, obsessed about is is the actual wound closure and the tension in in the wound you know Jenkins from Guildford talked about a ratio of four to one bill when you were a registrar and well you know in the liver we talk about at least six to one in closure of the wound uh, and in a big fat guy, we'd, we'd do eight to one, so eight length of suture to the length of the wound. And in that way, we've been able to get people through uh, without much pain. Uh, we use intercostal catheters rather than epidurals, which has actually allowed us to get the patients going. And, and I, you know, in our hands, uh, the recovery is actually hardly any different. And the, certainly the operative time is probably half. Now, when we go on to robotics, you know, I was, uh, when I was in, in America as a visiting professor at MD Anderson, I watched them do a robotic liver. And, um, and actually, it was quite tempting. But it did take an awful long time just to do a little wedge. And part of the problem was that the energy device wasn't that great. But there's no doubt the, the dexterity is better. But the whole setup took an awful long time. You know, I can do a right epitectomy in two hours, but laparoscopically, you know, it would take an awful lot longer. And what is now interesting is that when we talk to our American colleagues uh, in New York and other parts of America, uh, the managers of the hospitals are now dis dictating to them, look, we don't want you to do a laparoscopic liver if it's going to take you know, longer than it would do open because the operative costs are so high and yet the cost for the procedure that they will reimburse them will be the same. So th there's this sort of a break coming from the finance people saying, well, it's all right for you guys to spend all day having fun, but actually it's costing us rather a lot of money. Yeah. 
the, the, I mean, the robotic uh, aspect is, is really interesting because there's no doubt in rectal cancer, but that's a different, different situation. You're operating deep down in the pelvis and you have difficulty with access, vision. So I think I personally believe that ro robotics will improve rectal cancer surgery, but not that convinced in upper, and especially with, with the liver. And I think you have uh, a lot of benefits to palpate lesions too, palp haven't you, Mel? My, my biggest concern is finding the lesions. And, you know, the sort of complexity of the operations, you know, like I said earlier, on our database, instead of five procedures, we've now got 360 plus uh, different permutations. Mm. That's how complicated it is. Mm. And, the, and the difficulty is not about how we've transected, but how, how to find them and how to take them and preserve the anatomy. And, 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 and functional reserve for a possible future resection. And keep, we didn't, exactly. We didn't mention what proportion of patients who have a liver resection go on and have another liver resection. It's quite high, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's in our hands, I think it's 10%. Yeah. And, and they do really well, mm. paradoxically. Yeah, You'd think they would do worse. They almost do better, don't they? Because they've got No, they do better. We just recently analysed it. Uh, and actually, paradoxically, they're the, they're the best group. Yeah. And I, don't, I think maybe they just get screened twice or whatever, but um, or they because the screening confirms liver-only disease as opposed yeah. to disseminated disease. So, yeah, I think we're very excited about that. Though, you know, I did a redo this morning, and and, and actually, it's not spectator sport. It's quite hard. Yeah, it's more difficult, is it? Because it's much more difficult. It's it's hard going, and I think. Uh, sometimes I wonder why I ever did that, but anyway, the patients do well from it. I think the the message should be really that uh, that you know you don't really need to have a robot to do good proper liver surgery. It's it's. it's um... I mean, you know, who knows, Brendan? You know, the, these mm -hmm. techniques evolve, mm -hmm. um, and it may be the next big thing round the corner. And um, we certainly keep an open mind, of course. But m my concern is that it's at the end of the day just. A technique and we mustn't forget the patient and what we need to do to that patient which is find all the lesions and take them out and not waste any liver um, because you know you mentioned earlier about liver transplantation and of course up to now um, up until the last few years liver transplantation had been tried and, and been pushed aside this is for colorectal for metast colorectal yeah. metastases and, and and the reason being that um, they recurred quite quickly, but of course that was an era when we didn't have the imaging accurate enough to know what else is going on, number one. Uh, and because of the immunity uh, suppression, the, the tumours tended, you know, the floating tumour cells obviously found fertile ground. So, so it's been a sort of no-go area for a very long time. Though there are centres, certainly in America, and, and the Norwegians actually are, are doing some very interesting work in Oslo, and I respect their work greatly. And they've been very careful, very methodical. They've screened the patients very thoroughly. Uh, they learnt very quickly that if you go to transplantation before you have stability of the metastasizing sort of tumour, then you're not going to do well. So you're not going to do well if you've got lung mets or other mets or whatever. Um, but there are patients, there are individual patients where there just may be one tumour that is invading, for example, all three veins that has not metastasized, mm. that responds to chemotherapy and it still remains much smaller, but still not technically removable, mm. and maybe otherwise fit and young. And, and I think those are people that we perhaps should consider for liver transplantation. The, the problem in, in, in this country is, of course, it's shortage of, of, of yeah. um, donor organs. P apparently they got more organs in, in, in Norway. So, so I think that this is, this is a new chapter that we're entering into, 
Uh, and who knows, you know, it may well be that uh, we're watching their work with, with great interest. Um, it is fascinating, isn't it, to think that you, but it, it's, it's, it's intuitive that there must be a small proportion of patients which the only site of disease, because otherwise you'd never have cured anybody, Mer. Quite. If, so there's got to be patients where, because for technical reasons you can't remove the tumour, that they have a chance. They're a small proportion. But, but of course, you know, most of the people that are asking have got overwhelming yeah. multiplicity of lesions, lung mets, yeah. not responding to chemo, and you know, they're never going to be transplantable. And of course the problem, as you said, is that if you, if you replace the, uh, the liver with a healthy new liver, if there are little tiny cells gone to the lungs and you put immune, immune, immune suppression, suppression yeah. you're probably then, then, the, then they'll, they'll flare very quickly. Yeah. So I, I think that it's there, you know, it's just it's a there to, to, to sort of, to, it's a thoughtful process that we do need to yeah. keep in mind. And, and I, I think that hopefully we'll find a way of finding more organs in this country and revisit this. And of course, uh, the other way, people are looking at um, donation of you know, half a liver from a parent, for example, uh, so that you know, a parent would give his son half his liver as a donated liver, mm. if it's suitable. Yeah. Um, and th this opens up a whole Pandora's box of responsibility yeah because you need to make sure you, 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 you look after the donor and look after the recipient. Mm. And, and so this is a whole new area, but, um, and certainly expanding rapidly in the Far East, for example, uh, living related uh, transplantation is coming in uh, for other tumors uh, and, and including cholangiocarcinoma, for example. But, you know, I, I think you've got to, be very careful in your selection. And, not, and also the, the problem, of course, is that it's really impossible to detect small areas of cancer outside the, the, the field, isn't it? We have the same problem with peritoneal malignancy is that, you know, we, we worry that we can, do, uh, we can remove this area, but we don't know what's going to happen in the lungs and the liver and so on. Yeah, so I think, I think as I imaging, the improvement in imaging is allowing this now to come back because, you know, with better imaging, you can be that much more confident that the lungs are clear, that, that, that there's no bony mets or whatever. And, and so watch this space and I take my hat off to them. And, you know, the great guys, uh, we meet them in as uh, skiing actually per chance. And, uh, and they're, they're really a good gang and I really admire their work. One of the fascinating things about, about Basingstoke for me has been, I came to work with Bill and Merv and Bill was doing rectal cancer and Merv was doing liver section. So they both picked winners. I mean, there's no better winner in metastatic disease. And I have a cartoon actually, which I made and it's a picture of, of, of Merv and Bill and, and I, when I was appointed and it says, shall we give him the appendix? <laughs> <laughs> So I think, I think it's a fascinating story. I mean, the work that we do in Basingstoke now is very much built on what, what Bill and Merv have developed. We're still a very strong surgical unit in Basingstoke. Then it can't be that difficult. But then. <laughs> <laughs> but, so it's, it's fascinating that we have, we continue to build and help each other and develop the special interests that we have. In, Absolutely. And we're a very strong surgical community with global influence. Thank you very Lovely. much. Lovely. And thank you, Bill, for getting me going on it. <laughs> thank you for getting going. <laughs>